So how we go about doing this uh, impression. Uh, one of the first things we do is we use attributes. Uh, everybody who's played a role-playing game or even pseudo role-playing game or a racing game or a fighting game uh, uh, should be familiar with attributes. So what attributes are is we're deriving data from non-quantifiable sources. Uh, asking how strong someone is is a very complicated thing and if you've ever watched any weightlifting or any track and field or uh, like World Strongest Man competitions, uh, you can see there that there's lots of different measures of strength. Is it uh, core stomach strength? Is it raw lifting power? Is it endurance? There's a lot of different ways to, to measure this. So what we want to do is quantify out what ways for our game are we going to do this, and we call those attributes. So then how do we get to these attributes? How do we pick? Like I just said, things, are, things get really complicated. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is break down our subject, the thing we want to represent from the real or fictional world uh, in our game world, into its smallest bits. So we're going to have three examples here. And actually in this one, I, I welcome everybody to, to go ahead and turn your mic on. And I'm going to ask a few questions. So we have here a wheelbarrow, a cow, and a rocket ship cartoon rocket ship. So someone, in, uh, could someone volunteer, turn on your mic and tell me what kind of attributes we could have with a wheelbarrow. Carrying capacity. Carrying capacity, absolutely. And what kind of measurement will we do that in? Uh, newtons, pounds. Sure. Um, what about volume? Sure. Yeah, it could be cubic feet, could be cubic inches, could be centimeters, uh, could be weight, could be newtons. Absolutely. What are someone else? What What is another attribute that we could apply to a wheelbarrow? Speed. Speed. Absolutely. How fast does it move? It is an old wheelbarrow that barely moves at all, or is it uh, got really nice bearings in there, and it's well balanced and moves quickly. Great. What What else? Maneuverability. Maneuverability, absolutely. And I have someone else is about to speak too. I was going to say dexterity. Dexterity, yeah. How, how, how new is it? Okay, absolutely. So yes, all of those and many, many more. What about strength of the handle? You put too much stuff in it, it breaks. Or comfort, like uh, you know, this one's rough on the hands and uh, hard to use. Or color, uh, that's you know that could be used for something else. There or strength and uh, durability. If you put too much weight in it, maybe this one cracks, maybe that one doesn't. There's many, many attributes that we could apply to this. And as a system designer, uh, what we the trap we often fall into, and the reason you see so many redundant games, is instead of looking what they're at what they're trying to represent, they look at what somebody else has already represented. Uh, so when you see the same old attributes coming through the games time and time again. It's often because someone's not taking a fresh look at this like we are. Now, let's go for another example. What about the cow? Somebody tell me an attribute of a cow. Stamina. Moo capacity. Moo capacity, sure. Moo capacity, it could be important. Stamina, absolutely. How far can this cow walk? They can't walk far enough, they can't get to the fresh grass. Milk generation? Absolutely. Uh, so if we were playing a farming game or a dairy game, you would want the cows with the highest milk production. All right, what else? You can go ahead and type them. That's good. I'll read them out. Meat? Yeah, yeah. How much meat is on this cow? Uh, if this is a meat cow versus a milk cow, and there's some balance you could put in there. Maybe tendency to shift into parallel dimensions. Sure, absolutely. A sci-fi cow uh, could do that. What about some weird things like quality of manure for a farming game? Number of legs? Sure, yes, generally four. Uh, and it would depend on what kind of game we're playing and making for. Uh, writing skill? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, could this cow be ru ridden? Uptake? How much it eats? Food required? Absolutely. These are great. You guys are doing really well here. So as you're seeing, we're coming up with lots and lots of attributes. Now, if I told you we're playing a, a simple farming game and you get to milk the cow once a day, would we care how many uh, the cow's ability to shift into parallel dimensions? No, we would not. 
Now, if we were playing a science fiction game where aliens were coming down and probing cows, then we might, you know, then it would be important. So at first, as we break down uh, our concepts to their smallest bits, in this exercise, what I would recommend to you as, as systems designers is don't hold back. The, the silly answers we're hearing, the kind of way out there answers, those are great. And those are the kind of things you want to break down as far as you can. Now, let's do one last one quickly. Rocket ship. A cartoon rocket. Silly cartoon rocket ship at that. What are some kinds of uh, attributes we could put on this? Thrust, velocity. Fuel. What kind of fuel? Fuel consumption. Carrying capacity. Absolutely. Air capacity. Absolutely. You know, how far can they travel before they run out of air or do they recycle it? Uh, cost of it, absolutely perfect. Crew capacity, yeah, man, you guys are rocking. So, yeah, there you go. So there's a bunch of examples of how many cows it can hold, yes. Uh, how many uh, wheelbarrows full of cows it can hold. How its ability to fit in a wheelbarrow while being driven by a cow. Yes, we can do all of those things. Uh, as systems designers, we create the world. Uh, we run it. It's our choice. Now, that is given we're beholden to the creative vision in what we're doing. So now that we've got this giant mess, let's look at another example. On the left is a somewhat simplified uh, version of, of human parts. And on the right is how we usually see them in video games. Uh, is that silly? Are video games dumb because they don't take into account your uh, gallbladder health? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think that keeping track of your gallbladder health is not something that most players want to do. Uh, that's another one of those impressionistic uh, systems that uh, in life, life is complicated, life is not fun. We don't really care about gallbladder health in video games. And someone in real life who's having a problem with that would, but that's not really something we want to represent either, uh, probably. You know, there, there could be video games a surgeon simulator or something that did, but for a standard RPG, uh, hack and slash, dungeons, and, you know, hunting treasure kind of game, for us, hit points are probably good enough to sum up all of health. Uh, and that's why uh, we, we have hit points. You might see some games where they break it down a little bit more, uh, like a headshot would, uh, would recognize brain as being different than just standard hit points. Uh, sometimes there are heart shots. In some shooters, again, you're recognizing a difference. Sometimes there are hit locations. Uh, there was a really great game called uh, Bushido well, uh, quite some time ago. There was a sword fighting game, and if you got hit in the, the arm, your arm went out. You couldn't use it. Uh, if you got hit in the leg, your leg went out. You couldn't use it. So they broke down uh, those systems specifically for their game, and there's a very specific reason. They didn't do it arbitrarily. Uh, we try not to do these things arbitrarily. So we, we break everything down just like you did with the cows and the spaceships into our, our most complicated system possible here, and then we decide uh, intelligently for our game how we're going to represent this in the game. So then we simplify it even further to our little guy here, and we want to have some, uh, some attributes, right? And so for our guy, we're going to have hit points, strength, dexterity, and a few more. Uh, those are detailed out in the data RPG, and that's the example I'm going to go over. But for our little guy, we're going to just talk about hit points, strength, and dexterity. And at this point, uh, we want to say, well, what does that mean, hit points, strength, and dexterity? What do those things actually represent? Now, this is a great time to have already done your giant list. So when we talked about all the attributes of a cow, uh, maybe milk production or meat, we talked about that, or endurance. Maybe endurance is just a function of hit points, right? So here we've decided what are the, the detailed things and what are they represented by. So hit points, we're going to say, in our game, represents the health of your bones, your muscle, your blood, and your organs, and the other things we saw. Your strength is going to represent your ability to lift, jump, hold your breath, run, and some more things. Dexterity will represent shooting, dancing, throwing, and catching. Now, notice there's a, little, there's a weird bit here that's a little bit ambiguous. Running and dancing are pretty closely related, and yet here they're governed by different attributes. Why is that? Uh, whoever's 
Your mic is on. If you could please mute yourself. All right. I'm going to mute you. Oh, we got a lot of people. That's great. So what we've decided is that running is a function of strength and dan dancing is a function of dexterity. Uh, and we decided it because I said so. Uh, I'm the systems designer. I decided that's how I want it to work, and that's how it's going to work. Uh, in the same way that an impressionistic painter says uh, that, that one brown line with a little brown line above it is a uh, telephone pole, therefore it is. Uh, we as systems designers are the same way. Uh, and we can, we can break it up uh, in any, any way we want. But I have decided for our game that if someone has a really high strength, they can run well. And if they have a low strength, they can't run well. If they have a high dexterity but a low strength, they still can't run well, but they can dance well. So that's my decision as a systems designer. And I get to make that decision. But doing an exercise this, like this where I categorize these things is going to inform those decisions. And then later on down the line, like let's say this is a role-playing game, uh, like a Grand Theft Auto, you know, everything in the kitchen sink thrown in kind of game. And there's a dancing mini game. And we don't know, some characters should do better, others should do worse, and you can increase some attribute to do better. And they would say, well, which one are we going to govern from? Me as a systems designer, it's like, well, I've already planned this out. It's dexterity. So having that big list uh, and then categorizing it up, we don't have to calculate a shooting score, a dancing score, a throwing score, a catching score, if we don't want to. Because we have decided at what level of granularity we're going to build our systems. 